Hi, my name is Rachel Sample and I'm uh, discussing an element that was critically important to the fundamentalist modernist controversy, which I feel is the Scopes trial, which occurred in 1925. Now, the fundamentalists were fundamental uh, Bible-believing uh, people who wanted to maintain the integrity of the gospel, and the uh, modernists wanted to evolve past that to match the times. And uh, they were embroiled in controversy and many across many spectrums in the 19, uh, early 20th century. But where things kind of came to a head and was, to me, what I feel is the Scopes trial. Because um, this really tested, it, re it was really like the theory of evolution coming from the modernist side and then the fundamental Christian beliefs crashing together in the courtroom in 1925. Now, it's also called the monkey trial because it, um, it originates or, you know, it comes from the theory of evolution, which Charles Darwin went in his book. The Origin of Species and that he wrote in 1859 or The Descent of Man that he wrote in 1871. Uh, he talks about man originating from monkeys. We were, he says in those books we were furry, ta we had tails, um, we were like an evolutionary accident not the same as we are taught in the scriptures that we are you know divinely created, that we are um, you know have a you know we were created in God's image and that so forth. So um, the events that led up to the Scopes tri scope trial was an, a, a man by the name of George William Hunter wrote a book called A Civic Biology in 1914. And in that book, he's a science textbook to use in high schools, he talks about the um, theory of evolution. And he doesn't like say it's a fact, but just him discussing it was just too much for fundamentalists um, to handle, you know, to imagine that that's going to be taught in the schools. So. Um, Tennessee decided um, that they weren't going to have it in their state and a man by the name of Rep Representative Butler uh, you know introduced a bill and it was uh, became law uh, in 1925 March 21st 1925 and they just said it is illegal to teach evolution in Tennessee public schools at this point the UCLA caught wind of it and said no nah, it's not really uh, you know uh, shouldn't happen because it's you know, challenging the civil liberties of students to be able to use the scientific method and to learn and to discover. They equated it to the Middle Ages, or the Dark Ages, where, you know, where you couldn't explore and you couldn't, um, you know, be exposed to new ideas. So um, this led to, you know, they said, if you can find someone in Tennessee who will teach it, then we will represent them in court, we will um, pay the fees, we will try to get this overturned. Um, a group of leaders in Dayton, Tennessee thought, well, that would actually, if we could get the trial here, that could probably bring some uh, much needed uh, tourism dollars and restart our economy. So they went about finding a teacher that would test this and they did. They found a man by the name of John Thomas Scopes and hence the name Scopes Trial. He was a 24 year old football player, um, kind of substitute teacher, not really like bought and sold out to it. but. He was, became the face of the, um, the trial and named after him. And uh, the face of the anti-evolution uh, movement was a man by the name of William Jennings Bryan. Here's a younger picture of him, not so a little bit younger than he was during the scope trial, but I thought it was a nice picture anyways. Um, and, um, you know, they went at it in court. It was outside, there was a lot of pub publicity, a lot of interest. There were all newspaper clippings all over the country, in fact, uh, Brian gave an article, an interview to the New York Times and said, basically, if the scope struck, like, if we lose, if evolution wins here, then that's going to be the end of Christianity because they can't coexist together. They have completely different ideologies, like divine, you know, create divine design or versus, you know, evolution. They just cannot exist together. But lo and behold, uh, you know, he won. And the scope trial, you know, they ended with um, Tennessee still being illegal to teach evolution. Um, and then sadly, uh, five days after the trial, uh, Brian died, but he has a monument, there's a college named after him, and it really commemorates this time of this fundamentalist, modernist controversy. Um, and it wasn't until 66 years later, in 19, um, let's see, oops, 1967, that um, they finally did overturn it and say, you can teach evolution, and, and still to this day, it's still a controversy in public schools. How do we teach this theory? in public schools. Thank you.